Hi, I'm Vincent Lafre, Canon Explorer of Light. We're going to continue discussing tilt shift lenses. In this case, the shift function of these lenses. Here's a perfect example of when you would use such a function. You see the UN building right behind us on the east side of Manhattan. Very vertical, very rectilinear building. If you go ahead and you take a wide angle lens, in this case a 17 millimeter lens, we're going to go ahead and engage live view. You'll see that we're faced with a conundrum of sorts. As long as we're square on, we can get no distortion in the building. But if you want to get the top of the building with a regular lens, as we tilt up, there's a tremendous amount of distortion that's going on, not only in the side buildings that they're falling or pinching in, but also in the building itself. This is where a shift function of the tilt shift lens comes into effect. So our first step is going to be to try and center everything. And I'm looking at both buildings on the side. If I tilt up too much, the buildings will pinch in and they'll pinch out if I tilt down too much. Got to find the absolute right level right there. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and punch in with our focus and double check that we're perfectly in focus on those windows. This is where I shift the lens up. And you'll see the lens actually physically moves up. And now you can see that even though the camera's not moving, I'm not tilting the camera up, I'm seeing the top of the building. And I can frame it exactly the way I wish. That looks good to me. So know that if you have to get a perfect architectural photo of the exterior of a building, uh, this is the perfect lens, either a 17 or 24 or even a 45 to do that with. And you can eliminate all distortion you can keep everything looking super rectilinear and look like the top architecture photographs you see in those magazines. So here we are at Grand Central Station. This is one of my favorite locations to shoot in Manhattan. Uh, we're actually in one of the six windows that are on the east and west side of the building and we can get a really unique angle. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna shoot vertical with the 24 millimeter tilt shift 3.5 version two. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and push this back button back here and rotate the lens 90 degrees so that as we shift, we shift up or down in the same direction as the orientation of the vertical image. Go ahead and reframe again. And you'll see what we'd expect, which is a huge amount of distortion on the sides here, which is what you'd get with any wide angle lens when it's pointed down this much. So here's the beauty of the tilt shift lens. We're gonna go ahead again and point it perfectly towards the horizon. Make sure our alignment is dead on so there's the minimum amount of distortion possible. Definitely useful to have those grid lines up there right now. There we go, lock everything up. You can see everything's centered. I've got three archers on the right, three archers on the left, and hopefully very little distortion. We're gonna go ahead and the first thing I always do is I'm gonna punch in with my live view and make sure I'm in focus. Here we go, right on the information sign right there. Go back to full frame and live view right now, and you'll see now I can go ahead and shift the lens down and still get the original frame you saw, almost, but pretty darn close, with almost no distortion on the columns. And we're gonna go ahead and shoot a few frames. So we're here now in downtown Manhattan at the Breslin, one of New York's more famous steakhouses. It's got an absolutely beautiful setting, beautiful bar, beautiful details. And still, it's a pretty compact spot, so there's always a challenge for an architecture photograph, especially of an interior. It's a perfect use of a 17 millimeter tilt shift. We're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're actually gonna shift the lens up and down and in fact, stitch together a panoramic. This is gonna allow us to get a very nice range in terms of the framing, a somewhat of a rectangular but more of a square image. We're also gonna minimize distortion and this is a great way to get a very unique looking image pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and frame up the bar and really look carefully at the vertical lines. I wanna make sure that the camera is perfectly level and that there's no distortion whatsoever in the vertical columns. So I'm gonna go for a longer exposure, low ISO, get a nice rich negative. And once I've done that, I'm gonna check my focus, go ahead and punch in. You can see that everything's lined up geometrically. And the next step simply is to go ahead and start shifting. So I'm gonna start from the bottom of the range, not all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna go one tick above because you might get a little bit of vignetting if you go all the way to the bottom and fire off a frame. Once that's done, Go ahead and come up to the next mark. Fire off the frame again. These are gonna overlap, that's the idea, because we're gonna do this in software. One more frame without any shifting whatsoever. And then the last two frames, one more. And the last. 
I'd probably have to adopt an 11 millimeter or even wider to get something similar if I wanted to do this with one lens and you'd see a lot more distortion. That's the advantage of doing it this way. Go ahead and show you how these images stitch together. Here we are in Adobe Photoshop. We're using the auto import feature where we select these five frames and it's automatically going to stitch the images together. And you can see it's a really nice job of it. And you can see when you look at these images, there's a good lack of distortion. That's pretty impressive. I'm going to show you one more example that we shot in uh, downtown Manhattan. Again, this time we use the same 17 millimeter tilt shift lens. I minimized as much of the distortion as I could on any of the buildings. And I went ahead and went from left to right in four or five frames. But it's a great way to stitch images together without any distortion whatsoever, without having to correct that in post uh, with software.